Merci beaucoup. Tous les Canadiens ont vu la semaine, la semaine dernière que Justin Trudeau et ses députés sont en train de camoufler la vérité par rapport à la scandale uni. Aux deux comités, les députés libéraux sont en train d'empêcher la divulgation des documents et les réponses aux questions clés. Rappelons que le scandale a ses origines dans le fait que le premier ministre s'est intervenu afin de verser près d'un demi-milliard de dollars à un groupe qui avait payé sa famille un demi-million de dollars. Il a essayé d'empêcher les Canadiens de savoir la vérité avec des documents caviardés qui empêchent le vu de la vérité. C'est pourquoi les deux comités, des, le, le, le comité des finances et la comité, le comité d'éthique, sont en train de forcer des motions pour divulguer ces documents. Nous voulons savoir combien la famille Trudeau a été payée. Nous voulons savoir que, combien euh, euh, son bureau s'est euh, intervenu afin de verser ses sommes et d'impliquer euh, ses adjoints politiques dans l'affaire euh, unie avant que les, les fonctionnaires ont eu l'occasion de prendre un, une décision. Donc, les députés conservateurs ont dit que nous sommes prêts à travailler aussi longtemps que possible afin de rendre la vérité visible au, à, à tous les Canadiens. Aujourd'hui, nous revendiquons que le premier ministre mette fin à son camouflage et permette les comités de, parlementaires d'obtenir la vérité. Finalement, nous, il faut reconnaître, en fait, nous sommes dans une pandémie. Donc, il nous faut travailler sur les priorités des Canadiens. C'est les libéraux qui empêchent ces comités de faire leur travail. Avec les grands discours de 12 heures, les libéraux ont empêché le travail du comité des finances. Le Canada a le taux de chômage le plus élevé au G7, le déficit le plus grand au G20. Et maintenant, notre comité des finances ne peut pas faire son travail parce que les députés Trudeau empêchent ce travail avec des obstructions et des discours de, des heures et des heures. Retournons au travail que les Canadiens ont, nous ont élus pour faire. C'est de répondre à cette pandémie et non pas d'empêcher le travail parlementaire pour des raisons de camouflage. Donc, nous, nous annonçons aujourd'hui que les conservateurs feront n'importe quoi, prendront n'importe quelle étape parlementaire pour mettre fin au camouflage de Justin Trudeau et pour rendre la vérité en ce qui concerne le scandale uni public et disponible aux Canadiens. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, as uh, my colleague, Mr. Baird, and I will share with you today, Justin Trudeau carried out a massive cover-up again last week. His MPs engaged in dozens of hours of filibusters, preventing the ethics and finance committees from getting at the truth. We're in a pandemic, and here is Justin Trudeau blocking the work of our parliamentary committees, preventing the Finance Committee from addressing the fact that we have the highest deficit in the G20 and the highest unemployment in the G7. Our MPs in the Finance Committee should be working on that. But instead, Trudeau is blocking that work, preventing it from happening in the first place so that he can continue a filibuster to cover up we scandal documents. We as Conservatives, are going to continue to make to, to, to work to, to bring these documents public, to get answers to the unanswered questions, and to establish an anti-corruption committee that can focus on getting to the truth. Remember, Justin Trudeau personally intervened to give 
a $500 billion grant to a group that had paid his family $500,000. Now he's trying to cover up the truth. He's trying to cover up whether he got more money than the $500,000. He's trying to cover up the role of his office in handing out that money. He's trying to cover up the fact that public servants may have spoken out against the grant before it ever happened. Well, I'm here today to announce the Conservatives will take any steps necessary within our parliamentary system to get at the truth. We will not stop. We will not relent. And I'm also here today with my colleague, Mr. Barrett, to call on the Prime Minister to end the filibuster, end the games, end the dirty tricks, and end the cover-up so that Canadians can see the truth. We have a pandemic before us. We have record levels of debt and the highest unemployment in the G7. It is time for MPs to get to work on solving those problems, and it is time for Justin Trudeau to end the obstruction that is preventing them from doing so. Get out of the way and let us do our work so that we can get to the truth and get working for Canadians. Thank you very much. Well, good morning. We saw last week in the continuation of the cover-up into corruption in, in government by Justin Trudeau and his members at the Finance and Ethics Committees that uh, they'll stop at nothing to uh, keep the truth from coming to light. And the arguments that we heard that, uh, you know, from some Liberal MPs that perhaps his mother and his brother aren't his family and, uh, and perhaps the, uh, we should take them at their word. Uh, if, if we are to concede that uh, the Prime Minister's mother and the Prime Minister's brother are indeed his family, that we should take Justin Trudeau at his word, that the amount of money that they received in, in payments from the WE organization, half a million dollars before Justin Trudeau and his government gave that organization a half a billion dollars, that we should take them at their word. We know that this summer we heard uh, first that nobody received any money. Then we heard that, well, it was just a half a million dollars between friends. Then we heard that they weren't actually friends. We need independent verification uh, from a third party of the amount of money that was paid. This is critical. This is key to our understanding of uh, the decision making that went in. A decision that was made when it was laid on, when the proposal was laid on the cabinet table included pictures of who? The prime minister's family members. The, the proposal from this organization, created by the WE organization, then given to the public service to consider whether or not the only organization that could execute on their proposal was them. It's time for Justin Trudeau to allow parliamentarians to do the work that we've been sent here to do. Particularly in the context of a pandemic, the standing committees that are dealing with uh, these issues of corruption need to be able to give that work, hand it off, to an anti-corruption committee. And then the, the work, the important work of uh, committees like government operations and official languages, finance and ethics can continue to do their work and address Canadians' concerns as they relate to the pandemic. It's time for Liberal MPs to end the PMO-directed filibuster, to vote on the motions, to let the truth come to light and to release the documents. The Ethics Committee will be meeting today at 11 a.m. And we'll see if after dozens of hours of filibuster late into the night last week, if we are finally going to see Liberals uh, allow the truth to come to light. Thanks very much. We'll now go to questions, starting with questions on the phone. Quick reminder, one question, one follow-up per reporter. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions, commençant par les questions au téléphone. Un petit rappel, euh, une question, une question suivie par journaliste, s'il vous plaît. Opérateur, avons-nous une première question? Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour toute question. There are no questions registered at this time. Back over to the floor. Well, questions from the room. Good morning. Marika Walsh with the Globe and Mail. I'm just, can you just, uh, either of you, explain to me specifically what you will be doing? Are you going to move ahead with the motion? at the House of Commons tomorrow, like you're talking about the need for the Liberals to stop, but what actually are the Conservatives going to do to make sure that happens? Like, I, I, I guess I'm a bit confused about your next steps. Thanks very much for the question. 
uh, we we heard on the weekend that uh, the Liberals agree that there needs to be review of uh, of uh, spending related to the pandemic, and their uh, you know their House leader, uh, their government House leader has said, well, they're going to uh, they're going they're willing to to entertain parliamentarians reviewing their spending. Well, that's that's exactly what the Finance Committee needs to do with respect to um, our proposal for an anti-corruption committee. It seems like they don't want to acknowledge that there has been uh, gross. Um, you know, uh, gross errors in their judgment and and perhaps uh, illegalities that have occurred. And so it's time for uh, for that to be examined. We've called uh, for there to be an anti-corruption committee. Those discussions are ongoing. Um, we'll hear in, in the in, in the next day uh, whether or not the opposition is going to move forward with uh, with our um, motion that's been tabled in the House with respect to an anti-corruption committee, which you've seen. And so uh, we'll give the Liberals the opportunity uh, today. We've heard that there are many pressing matters that they want to deal with. And so um, we'll see uh, if they have, uh, if they're willing to, to take the opportunity at committee this morning to end their filibuster cover-up. And so are you in negotiations with the government right now, or is it just a wait and see until your 11 a.m. meeting? The, the government's been given the opportunity to, um, to meet with our, uh, our House leadership team to discuss the, uh, the proposal that we've made, the motion that we've tabled in the House with respect to an anti-corruption committee. Um, it seems like they're open to, uh, to uh, some committees meeting. What we need to hear from them is that when committees meet, it won't just be hours and days of a filibuster uh, because uh, parliamentary procedure allows them to have their say. They believe that that is going to allow them uh, to get their way. Um, talking endlessly will only um, hurt the interests of Canadians. Uh, they need to uh, allow uh, for, for the standing committees to do the work that they've been charged with. And um, and perhaps they can take the leadership of moving first uh, to uh, to end the filibuster today at Ethics. Um, acknowledge, I mean, we heard from a Liberal MP Greg Fergus this weekend um, that they're going to continue to filibuster committees. Um, well, this is now their opportunity uh, for their leadership to say uh, we recognize that it's time to it's time to move on, uh, release the documents, and end the cover up. Hi there, it's Annie Bergeron Oliver with CTV National News. This morning, We Charity released dozens of pages of documents related, related to the testimonies of the Kielbergers and other people at committee. I'm wondering, one, what you think about the timing, and two, their decision to put all these documents on their website, and are these things that you had seen and knew that were coming down? Uh, no, we didn't uh, have a heads up that those were documents were going to be released. Uh, but obviously, we will we'll read them carefully. Uh, and uh, but make no mistake, uh, this old tactic of releasing a bunch of irrelevant documents that don't answer the questions while covering up the documents that matter uh, will not suffice. We we have very specific questions about how much the Trudeau family got paid, about how much lobbying the WE organization engaged in, about who in the PMO they talked to. We want all of those questions answered. They can release 5 million irrelevant documents. That will not distract us. We'll go through them, but if we don't have the answers to the aforementioned questions, we will not stop. So one of the questions that is partially answered is the documents show that Sophie Gregoire Trudeau had nearly $24,000 uh, in expenses paid for eight events. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I, it, it, it seems like another example of the WE organization paying off Justin Trudeau through his family members, giving him advantages and benefits uh, that he then re reimbursed through uh, his personal intervention in a half billion dollar grant to the WE organization. So um, it, it is just mounting evidence uh, of the very generous treatment that the Trudeau family received uh, and that uh, Mr. Trudeau felt inclined to address when he made uh, his personal and inappropriate intervention in the grant to the WE organization.
Yes, Lee Berthium from the Canadian Press. Um, I wanted to ask you how you respond to Pablo Rodriguez's uh, suggestion that uh, if you do move ahead with your motion tomorrow, it could be a confidence vote. Does that give any pause to you? Do you have any thoughts on, on what seems to be a bit of a threat? Well, is he really suggesting that, that if the committee looks into Trudeau's corruption, that Trudeau's just going to call an election? Is that really what he's going to do? I mean, obviously... Setting up a committee is not a matter of confidence. No government in Canadian history has been brought down because a opposition motion passed to set up a committee. So that would be simply a decision by Justin Trudeau uh, to avoid accountability, cover up his personal corruption by thrusting the country into an unnecessary election right in the middle of a pandemic. I think if he did that, Canadians would see that he's covering up some very serious offenses that he doesn't want people to know about and that he's prepared to imperil the health and the livelihoods of Canadians in order to do it. And you've talked about uh, the record unemployment. You've talked about uh, the, the large deficits. Uh, you know, Finance Committee at this point in time is focused on we. Why do you think Canadians care, continue to care about this? Why, why do you keep fighting this um, when other issues, as you pointed out, can, are, are huge? Totally agree with you. Um, we need to get the Finance Committee back on finance issues. We have an appalling economy right now. Worst economy in the G7 by far. Biggest deficit in the G20 by far the worst economic record around. The Finance Committee needs to be working exclusively on that. And that's precisely why Conservatives have proposed creating a separate anti-corruption committee that can deal with the Wee scandal and other examples of corruption. Let's get the Finance Committee on Finance, the Health Committee on Health, the Ethics Committee on the Privacy Act uh, review. Let's get those committees doing pandemic-related work for Canadians to keep our Canadian people safe and protect their lives and their livelihoods. That's exactly what Conservatives are proposing, and it is exactly what Justin Trudeau is preventing from happening. We'll check one more time if there is any question on the phone. Operator, do we have a question? Once again, please press star 1 and the telephone keypad if you have a question. There are no questions registered at this time. Our last question will be David. Hi, good morning. I just have a question unrelated to WE. Um, obviously, you guys have been seeing the ongoing issue out on the East Coast in Nova Scotia um, with the commercial fishers and um, the First Nations lobster fishermen. Um, what issues are you going to raise in the emergency debate in the House today about this? And do you have any, any words that you want to say to whoever is, you know, um, whoever is uh, causing the vandalism that we're seeing out on the East Coast. Well, thanks for the question. It's, um, it's laughable. It should be embarrassing that uh, the minister responsible for addressing uh, the issues on the East Coast is proposing more talk in Ottawa. So we have multiple ministers of the Crown who have the authority and the ability to take action to, to address the issues uh, on uh, on the east coast um they want to they want to they want to talk tonight about it in ottawa it's time for those ministers to to get on to get on a plane to fly out to nova scotia get down to the wharf and have a conversation with both parties the it's been one month it's been a month since uh, the leader of the opposition aaron o'toole called for the prime minister to take action on this now a month later the ministers are proposing an emergency debate in the House. The government doesn't need an emergency debate. They're, they have a cabinet meeting today. They can, they can uh, put a group together, head out to Nova Scotia, and they can resolve the issue because they're the ones who are charged with doing it. And just in follow-up, what, what, what do you want to say to those people who are uh, perpetuating and, and are causing all that vandalism and that violence and, and, and you know... A lot, a lot of Canadians are looking at the situation there and just seeing that, yeah, that there is an issue with the government in action on defining what a moderate livelihood is, but there's also racism there. Is there anything that you want to tell to the people who are, you know, portraying, who are perpetuating that violence or committing those acts of vandalism? 
the rule of law needs to be followed and it needs to be upheld and the government has an obligation to uh, ensure that um, that uh, they they negotiate in good faith with both parties with respect uh, to the Marshall decision with respect to the circumstances on the ground and uh, having a, having an emergency debate in the House tonight is not the concrete action needed uh, by this government and by these ministers they need to get down to the wharf and start talking to the parties concerned. Next question. Hi, sir. I just wanted to go back to the we stuff just really quickly just to your comments about Ms. Gregoire Trudeau, Mr. Polyev. Are you saying that a, a prime minister's spouse cannot do other work? The ethics commissioner has signed off on her having this um, volunteer work. The ethics commissioner vetted uh, this entire procedure, as far as we know, and also signed off on her being reimbursed for expenses. So where are you drawing the line on, on what is and isn't allowed? If, if the ethics commissioner said yes, why wouldn't they do this? Well, the ethics commissioner did not say yes to the prime minister personally intervening to grant a uh, half billion dollar uh, uh, sum to an organization that had paid his family a half a million dollars. If your spouse is financially involved in an organization, then you shouldn't be involved in giving that organization public funds. It's as simple as that. And once you... What does the amount of money that um, each of the Trudeaus related to the prime minister got from we, how does that change the dynamic? You both said you need to know the specifics. You need a third party vetting how much they were paid in expenses. What does that really change at this point? We're looking for the truth. And uh, we have received anything but, and we've received contradictory testimony from ministers, from the prime minister, from representatives of the WE organization, and from government officials. And so corroborating information uh, or information that uh, disproves uh, the testimony that, that we've received is important. That's, that's part of the hearings. What happened this summer when we had uh, the call for these documents at finance that were ordered and then were illegally redacted and given to the committee the day before Parliament was prorogued, and uh, the committee, uh, the ethics committee, ordered the speaking fees for all of those individuals that passed, those were due for the day after Parliament was prorogued. If there was nothing to see here, it's hard to imagine why the Prime Minister uh, engaged in this uh, very extensive uh, cover-up that shut down Parliament during a global pandemic. We have people's lives and livelihoods uh, at stake, and the Prime Minister is concerned with his own self-interest. So uh, the documents need to, uh, the, the finance documents uh, need to be uh, dealt with. They need to be unredacted. The question of, of the privilege of the Finance Committee having been breached needs to be addressed. And the question of these documents being received by the Ethics Committee with respect to speaking fees, this is this is essential. Uh, parliamentarians already called for the release of these documents. The Liberals thought their six-week cover-up prorogation uh, would have changed the channel. Um, we're, we're here to say, as the official opposition, we're going to continue to do our job. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the press conference. This is the conference of the press.